Well, good morning, YouTube. Today is Friday, December 31st, 2021. It's the last day of the year. And so happy New Year's Eve. And today is episode number one of my planner uh, slash paper crafting series. So last month, or even starting a couple months ago when I showed you my 2022 new planner, I had asked if you wanted me to show you how I use my planner you know, why I use my planner, you know, how I decorate it, you know, that kind of thing. And it was all, all of the answers were a resounding yes. So thank you so much for that. And so here I am just right in the nick of time showing you how I prep for my planner for, you know, the first of the year. And I know that we all do our planners differently for those of you who are planners for those of you who are new to planners, I'm just going to show you how I do mine. And again, we all do them differently. And so all I can do is show you how I, I use my planner and what has worked for me. So, I mean, why do I use a planner? Let's start with that. Um, I've always been a planner girl. Even when I was little, I wrote things down. I was one of those who had, you know, notebooks filled with just all kinds of drawings, sketches, sayings, you know, from all, all around the borders, on the covers, just everything. I've always loved to do that stuff. And so it's just as kind of natural for me to, to um, be a planner girl, even before planning or planners was kind of a thing, you know. I always just wrote down and have been a lister and crossed things off and knew what I needed to get done. And so that's just... I love that it's evolved into the world of planning now and paper crafting and to me they go side by side. So um, let me just show you my planner. This is the box that it comes in. This is the planner. It's got a nice linen cover. And the reason it's not in the box is because I keep my clip art in here in my box because I love this box. and then together I just keep them like this in one of my project bags okay and then I just keep them safe like that now of course like I told you before I will be doing a tutorial on my um, on how to cover my planner it's actually a tutorial I've done before several times on retreats and once on my blog and even published in uh, quilts and more magazine several years ago so it'll be that tutorial and uh, I think I'll be doing that next month but I'm not sure which week but for right now I just keep it in a project bag and honestly even when I do the cover I'll probably keep it in a project bag anyway and so let's see I've wrote down on my notes you know just detailing a few reasons why I use a planner so first of all I use a planner to keep track of my work, places that I need to be, um, you know, phone meetings, designing deadlines, etc., things like that. And um, so basically what I'm saying is, yes, I use it for work, but I also use it to organize my time for play. And by play, I mean quilting, crochet, cross-stitch, thrifting, shopping, decorating my home, now I know that my work crosses over into my play, but I still love to do all of my work projects and I love to do play projects that are just for me that don't have anything to do with work. And so I love to plan for that time. There's so much that I love to do and there's so many things that I want to do. And I found out that through planning, I can do everything. I just can't do it all at the same time, right? And so through planning, I schedule time for my play and that way I have time to do what I want. I just prioritize and I'll show you that later as I go along. Um, another reason I use my planner is to plan time with my family, my friends, you know, weekend dinners and, and camping trips and things like that with my family and so day and retreats with my friends. And also I use my planner for self care, for taking care of me. Sometimes, you know, that's a struggle for me and that always has been because I'm always, 
you know, working first and doing all these other creative things first. And probably like a lot of moms, we put ourselves last. But I am finding out as I get older that it's more important to take care of myself. And so putting that in my planner and blocking out time for that has really been a big help. And um, let's see. Another thing I wrote down to tell you is by planning, I, I believe that I can make things happen. That's how I do it. I control my time and so, so that it doesn't control me. And, you know, you can never have total control of your time, but you can try your best. And by planning, my, my planner um, doesn't make me feel controlled. It makes me um, feel free. It frees me up to have time to do the things that I love. So, in other words, using a planner is not a restriction for me, meaning I, I don't, it's not like a lay down the law type of schedule that I have to adhere to or else, you know, I'm totally stressed out or anything. That's not what it is for me. It, um, it doesn't stress me out. It gives me freedom and I use it as my guide so that I can work and I can play in a structured and a balanced way. And so my planner is like my personal map to doing things that are important to me. Work, play, family, friends, health. If I didn't plan for these things and, you know, I just waited <laughs> to have some free time till I can start a project or, you know, put it in my someday category. It just, honestly, let's face it, it would never happen for me. And so I find that if I use a planner, then I don't have, you know, a chaotic life. I, I don't want to live in chaos. I like to plan and then I feel like that my time has purpose and I want to be purposeful in all things that I do and I want to live my life on purpose. And so my planner helps me to do that. So that's kind of my little soapbox on why I use a planner. And for everyone it's different, but for me, that's why I do it. And so, all right, let me check my notes here. So I want to make sure I don't forget to tell you anything. All right, so let's just go through my planner a little bit. And I'll be talking about different things. Let me move this up so you can see it. Let's see, is that centered, Cass? So, all right. So what I do is... Um, I decorate my planner or, well, I decorate after I start planning. But what I when I first start my planner is on the first day of the month. I do it on Sundays and I start the first Sunday of the month is when I kind of start with my layout here. And um, then every Sunday I just spend a little bit of time within each one, within each section. And I really don't spend a lot of time, and I'll even go into that later when I have my little section on, you know, how I use my planner. But I usually um, spend about 30 to 60 minutes every Sunday. And, you know, I used to use different days of the week and trying different things, but to me, Sunday just makes sense. It's kind of like my slow roll day, you know, my calm down day and planning for the rest of the week. And so in my planners, that's why I put um, Sunday as the first day of the week, because that's just kind of how it works out for me. And um, also, um, let's see why I decorate my planner. Okay, because I'm a visual person and my planner also becomes my journal to keep in the end at the end of the year. And it just kind of happens naturally. I don't do that on purpose. It just happens. And I have my old planners that I keep. And I'll give you a glance of those, a few of them. And I don't know. I guess I've never grown up. I mean, I love decorating my planner. It's like a throwback to my childhood or a continuation of my childhood. I've always loved to cut and paste and play with paper. I love school supplies of all kinds. And I've just never outgrown that. I grew up in a creative family where we made our own Valentines, you know, Christmas tree decorations, birthday cards, a lot of stuff like that. And my mom always had like um, construction paper, glue, you know, markers, pencils, crayons, just everything that we could use. I'm going to pull this 
going to show you. So now instead of construction paper, this is what I've been using for my paper. I mean, when scrapbook paper came along, I was just so excited. And now I'm so happy to be able to have my own papers. So this is my Happy Place crafting paper. It's eight and a half by 11 so that um, it can fit in my binders as well. And then I have clip art pages at the end. And I have a couple of pages. So these are the ones that are out on the market right now. My stitch crafting paper pad. And again, it has paper in it. And then, well, I can't show you the clip art at the end. As you can see, I've been using this because I've been cutting it out. And let me see if I can fit this back in here. This is my new um, denim daisy bag through it. So Emma and I love it. It's perfect to, perfect size to keep my papers and all that kind of thing. So I'll probably get into this again in a minute. But um, this is, I just cut out all the clip art and keep it in there in my little box here. And so that it's handy to use, so I don't have to stop and cut out every little thing that I want to do. It's already cut out. And so that's why I decorate my planner. I mean, obviously, you don't have to decorate your planner. You can just use it to fill in, and that's perfectly fine. But like I say, I'm just a visual person. I love to play with paper, and I think it's fun. And I think if I, I'm doing something, my model's always been that it should be cute and it should be fun. And it kind of turns my work into play. And so that's why I decorate my planner. All right, so let's go in and start, and I can explain about how I use my planner and how it works for me. So my planner is my schedule, okay? So I use it every day to guide me in what I need to be doing that day, that week, that month, and into the rest of the year but I just start a little at a time. I don't sit down and plan my whole year out. Like if I know a certain date for sure, then I'll write it down. But usually I just work a month at a time and just kind of do the overview for the month, like I said. And then I'll even have things to fill in here as I go along. And so in my planner at the very beginning, when I'm setting up for the year, See how you've got an overview here for a couple years. But here is planning for my year. So I kind of do a word of the year. I've done that for a long time. Sometimes it's not a word. Sometimes it's a saying or a quote, or it's just kind of my inspiration for the year. And this year, the word that I picked is plant. Okay. So, so I've written down here, in my book, to plant a seed is to believe in tomorrow. Planning is planting the seeds in order to reap the harvest of a healthy, happy, and creative life. So that's always been my motto about um, planners. And so because I'm a farm girl, a gardener, you know, whatever you want to say, I always, I've always just likened it to, you know, planting seeds. And, um, and I've always loved this, this scripture right here from the Bible and, um, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. But this I say, she which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And she which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And so that's what I believe. Like if you plant the seeds or plan, then that way you will be able to reap the harvest. And so that's kind of my motto for this year is to make sure that I plant those seeds. And then right here I have um, special dates to remember. And this is for the whole year. This is not just for January. There's just one page here. So here I'll be listing things like that just happen only that year, like special family occasions, maybe a special vacation, you know, things that I'm doing that I have to remember. We have we have spring quilt market here in Salt Lake City um, in 2022. So I'll be, you know, listing that and writing a lot about that. And that's what I do for that page. And so again, here's my monthly, like I've said before that I've talked about, this is my monthly overview. And this is just kind of the days that um, are scheduled, the details of each day 
are on my weekly pages, but this is kind of an overview that I can see. All right. And this is where I'll keep my notes for that week. I have more specified and many, many more notes and details on different things that I do that I keep in my binder here, which I will show you later. But this is kind of a little sneak of my binder and what I have going on in here. And these are really two companion pieces. Okay, this is my guide and this is kind of my workbook, if that makes sense. Because, you know, literally, I don't care how big or small your planner is, you can't fit everything in. I used to start out with great big planners and now I've just found I like small planners, compact that I can fit in my purse or, you know, a bag or whatever, that I can just jot down things to keep me, you know, on the straight and narrow as far as my schedule goes. But <clears throat> I use a much bigger book that I can add to and take away from uh, to keep my notes and I can just use them as a scratch pad and I, you know, don't worry about decorating or anything like that. This is just my notes. So I'll talk about that in a minute. All right. So this is just my overview of things that I like to do and priorities for this month, personal goals, you know, like in my priorities, those are usually my work related deadlines. And so I haven't filled this out yet because it's not the first Sunday of the month. And I just kind of started filling this out so that I could show you. But normally I don't start this stuff until the first Sunday of the month or the first day of the month. And, um, and of course, in my deadlines and my work-related things, I can't write those down and show you anyway because they're secret. And so that's not filled out yet. This is shopping, things that I know already that I went ahead and filled in that I need to purchase for specifically for this month for certain projects or people or occasions. This under my personal goals is usually about, you know, my family, having to do with my home or my family, things that I'm doing and uh, want to accomplish. And then of course my health goals, which speak for that, you know, for itself, the health goals that I'd like to accomplish that month and continue on with, which brings me to the weekly pages, which of course I haven't filled anything out yet. Um, but as you can see that I've put water here so that I make sure that I check these off so that I drink my eight glasses of water a day. And in here, it has much more room to really detail as far as my schedule goes, where I um, can break up my time in morning, day, or evening, or hourly, or by appointments, or whatever I want to do. And so I usually keep my, um, my sticky notes. Let's see, where's my little pad of sticky notes? These are my new sticky notes through... Um, I teamed up with It's So Emma and Post-It Notes. And a lot of times I'll have these all over the house, meaning my workstations, like in my cutting station, my ironing station, my sewing machine, my stitchy chair, in my purse, on my desk, you know, things like that. And then when I think of things, ideas, or find out, you know, that I have a new deadline or, or a deadline's changed or something like that, then I'll hurry and jot it down. And then I'll just bring it over and just stick it there or stick it on my bag or stick it on the cover, whatever. And then when Sunday comes, I go ahead and jot them down. And of course, my scheduling usually is on my phone. Like I, you know, I'm like everybody. I put things on the calendar on my phone. And, but then when Sunday comes, I'll just pull up my phone and make sure that I've copied what's off of my phone onto here so that I can detail it more. And so that's how I do that. Let's see, and then I have this extra to-do thing right here so that just for that week, there's certain things that, such as work deadlines and different things like that, or if I have a sew along, then I'll put, you know, like the block I have to have done that week or, you know, certain things like that. And so it's just all personalized for me and how that goes. And then um, at the end, it just goes through every month and starts over again with the overview of each month and then the weekly pages and things like that. But I do have several pages of notes at the end. And this is where I will write down like my thoughts and feelings, memories um, from the year, things that worked, didn't, didn't work, maybe new ideas I have for next year, just kind of like 
a, a recap of the year, just writing to me, kind of like a journal, just um, maybe if we went on a special family trip, I can write about that, or we had a special event in, you know, our family, I can write about that, and, and things like that, and then it becomes my journal, then I'm finished for that year, and so, sis, you want to hand me that little stack right here, I just pulled out a few that I can show you, here, let me start like this, this was my scrappy project planner that I did years ago with uh, It's So Emma, and I just, I mean, I haven't looked at this forever, but um, these are just scrap papers that I've had in here, but I had quilt patterns and stuff in here, and this was just uh, for quilting in the, in the back, but I did have my weekly stuff in the middle, so, and I usually have like tabs here, so I know I've showed some of these pages like on my blog and things like that in the past but this is what I'm talking about how it becomes my journal because this was in January of 2018 so we're looking at four years ago and during this time four years ago I'm just living my normal life and you know working my work and playing my play and doing all that stuff and I'm writing things down I'm decorating my planner and now as I'm looking at it, I love to go back and look back and say, oh yeah, that was during my uh, Let's Bake so along. And that was when I was doing Spelling Bee Saturdays for my, you know, my Spelling Bee book. And, and uh, I love to add things into, I'm gonna talk to you about that a little bit. And I can go through and I can remember what I was going to be doing. It's I went to Farm Girl Club on this day, Wednesday the 10th, and it was my day to teach. And let's see, this is little notes down here. Make sure everything is all packed and ready to go for retreat next week. So I was doing a retreat in St. George, St. George retreat all week. So here's like I put bigger things over here to cover all these days because I was just going to be at retreat that week in St. George. And in here, I put a little kind of a library card pocket here. And I wrote down every one. That was at the Holiday Inn in St. George for my, for my retreat that year from January 23rd to January 28th, 2018. So if your name's on there, it was at my retreat. And I just, I love that. It just becomes my journal by just really not trying to make it a journal, just writing things down and it just turns into that. Um, here we are into February now and I went to teach another scrappy retreat. So I'm talking about that. Anyway, so that's, and, and all of this stuff here, like these are just vintage patterns that I don't cut out the actual vintage pattern. I just, um, copied it onto my printer and, you know, scanned it so that it was a nice copy. And then I just cut them out and glue them in there. But you know me, I've always loved my vintage ladies and that's why I have my fabric with vintage ladies and all that stuff. And this is all just scrapbook paper that I've cut things out of or ephemera. Some are stickers, but I normally just cut and paste. I like that better. Stickers are too permanent for me. I like to move things around and I don't know, there's just Stickers I love. I really shouldn't say they're too permanent for me because, you know, I use them too. But most of the time, I just like to cut something out real quick and paste it in. And uh, I think that's fun. So that's a journal. You know, that one became a journal. I don't know. Maybe I'll just show you. I don't know how much I can really show you here. This is... Here. Let me see if I can find where I've got my... Well, these are just kind of work notes, so I really can't show you much, but I have, this is kind of a work one. Like I say, I didn't look through these before, <laughs> before I grabbed them to see what I could really show you. But the, you know, this is what I had just for work. So this is like my notions and products. So I have notes in here that were coming out at the time. And I just, again, decorated them the same way with vintage patterns notebooks. These are my filming ideas and my tutorials for my blogs. I have sketches. 
but I can go back here and remember when all of that was happening and coming to pass. This one, I'll just show you the inside of this one. This is from another year and whatever planner that I'm using, I like to find a punch that I can just punch. I believe this is an A5, so this is an A5 punch and I can just go ahead and punch anything. This one, I just um, printed that off, copied it off and one of my favorite sayings and um, by Dieter F. Uchtdorf. And I've always loved this saying, and so I wanted to put it in as my header page as kind of like, you know, what I wanted to do for my creative planning that year. And so that's just kind of a peek into how it becomes a journal. So let's see, let me look at my notes. All right, let's talk about decorating and paper crafting because now I kind of told you how I set up my planner and of course that will be different for you and it's always trial and error and every year brings different things. But the most important thing is it's just, you know, try to find time to plan because if you plan it, you'll do it. If you don't plan it, chances are you're not gonna do it. So, all right, so when I first start, so I'm sitting down, pretend today is the first Sunday of the month, the first day of the month, I'll just start with very basic designs. So I'll usually just start with my washi tape because that's very simple. So I've got a bunch here in my tins. Okay, this is a lot of my washi tape, not all of it, but a lot of it. And it's very simple to just lay some washi tape down. It's just not a big deal. And it makes for a very fast decorative thing. For here, oh, I was gonna tell you in here. Let me grab my pencil. So I always write everything down in pencil that I'm not sure about until I, um, I've got one right here, sis. Until I, you know, it's permanent. But for right here, I thought what I'm gonna do here is I really have a goal, you know, to make sure that I get my exercise in daily. So right here on this calendar right here is what I'm gonna start with. And so tomorrow, since that's January 1st, I'm gonna circle that day when I finish my workout, my exercise, my walk, whatever I'm doing. And I'll just continue circling them like that. Now I just did this in pencil, so that, but I'm telling you, those are gonna be in pen. But anyway, so I thought that was kind of a fun thing. So it is kind of fun to personalize what you wanna do. So now here I've taken my clip art and I just laid this down, not knowing exactly how I was gonna fill this up yet, but I simply put washi tape right there. I took a piece of my scrapbook paper. Sis, do you wanna hand me, just like open the bag and hand me one of the paper pads. So I just took my scrapbook paper and I just cut a strip out of one of the papers very easily and went like this, cut it into a little point and laid it here. I'm just doing things kind of out of the way so that I still have room to write. These are my um, flower power, the reinforcers for the holes, but the centers of the flowers are also stickers. So I put those down as like my bullet um, journal listing there so I can put my special dates to remember. But that's, and then I just put a piece of clip art there. And when I do my clip art, what I do, all right, so here's my box with my clip art. I simply, after I've cut it out, and of course, let's talk scissors then. I always use paper scissors. These happen to be Martha Stewart scissors, and then I have some smaller scissors that are in my binder pocket that are for more detailing, that are very small and sharp for when you're cutting out you know, tinier things like around my vintage ladies. I, I don't cut like exactly on the lines. I just basically cut around them like that. So they kind of look like paper dolls. And so definitely use uh, paper scissors. I keep those there. So, I'll, so for this, like, you know, I would just trim that around. That's a different one. Or if, say if I wanted to put that there, I've already cut it. I'll just take my glue sticks and what I use for glue sticks, I wanted to show you 
why not decorate your glue sticks, right? With my scraps of paper, as I was doing my binder, I decided to wrap some paper around these glue sticks. So I wanted to show you what this looks like first. So this is just the Scotch Create glue stick. Okay, I like this one, I like the size. I like how big it is right here at the top so that you can really glue like larger things if you're doing larger pieces of paper. But I wouldn't use this for smaller things because you know, you, it might get lost in the tip there. But I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Now the things that I buy for my paper crafting that are not mine, that I just purchase like glue and you know, tape, double-sided tape and things like that or, or um, stamps or punches or anything, I usually get on Amazon. And so I'll leave a link to those right directly to Amazon in my little Amazon shop. But you know, a lot of times I'll go to Joann's and Michael's and um, sometimes Hobby Lobby has good paper crafting stuff. But I really, honestly, for some reason, I find Michael's has the best supply of paper crafting that I that I get there. So I just have different kinds of glue sticks. This is my larger one that I use. This is kind of the same thing. It's just glue. And this one, the packaging, let's see, I saved that another one before I covered it with paper. This one is just another Scotch one. It's just a wrinkle-free. And this says multi-purpose for, for photos, a safe, permanent, you know, just read the labels and make sure, even though I'm not using photo, photos, I still like to have acid-free so that it, but I'm like, why not? If I have scraps of paper like left over from decorating, why not just cut it to size, wrap it around here, and I just use some double-sided tape to put it on like this. This is the double-sided tape that I have here, but there are several different brands. I don't know if they make this anymore because this is my last package, so I need to try to order it, but I've re really liked this. This is by American Crafts, and it's called Sticky Thumb, and this is double-sided. So I'll do that, and I'll just wrap it around. I mean, you can use paper for anything. This one is a zig pen, and I like it because you squish it, and there's liquid glue in there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a ball ballpoint pen tip, but as you squish it and go down, the liquid comes out. The more you squish it, the more liquid comes out, but I like it for tiny stickers or for tiny things. Um, and also you can really get into those areas. And then I just have, there's just other companies that have different glue sticks. Okay. So I use glue sticks and I use tape. This is also, Scotch has wider double-sided tape. This is by Scotch too, it's double-sided tape, but it's got a foam in there. So if you want something to stick up and be dimensional, and then this is another thing by Sticky Thumb. It's little tiny, little dots, sticky dots for little things. So you really don't need, I mean, you can use very basic supplies. You don't need to, you know, really go crazy and just buy every supply in the world. But these are just kind of things that I have gathered over time and have used and, and is on my desk in my bedroom. I have a little vintage desk in my bedroom where I keep all my paper crafting supplies and my setup in there and that's where I usually do it, although it's very easy to make things portable. And so what I do with that, again, is I just glue it down. Washi, you don't have to glue. It sticks itself. These are stickers that I glue and then I'm turning the page here, more washi, more um, clip art. Now this one, this late, I didn't want her to go into the date here. Her skirt was really wide, so I just glued her here. And after I glued her there, I just trimmed off her skirt on the side. And let's see, this one is a circle punch. Let me show you some punches. So I've got quite a few punches going on in here that I use quite a bit. So I'm just gonna show you Let's see, I'm gonna set this one over here so I can show you later, but I'm just gonna show you like different punches that I use. So this is a tab punch that will punch tabs. I know I have I have tabs already, but if I wanted to punch them, here's the tabs I have that are in my office set, but if I want to punch them out of a paper, I'll use that. Here's a, here's a cute shape right here that's a flower. Let's 
see. I'm going to try to find my, here's a, here's a Hexi. These are all different brands, just things I've had over the years and purchased. This is a one and a half inch circle, which is what I punched this with. And all I did was simply punch the circle out of my, out of one of my papers here. I just punched a circle and then I cut it in half and glued it here. I just like how that went in. Then I saved the other half and put it in here to use on another page for another thing. I like to end up using all of these little bits here and there. And this really helps in decorating. Like if you sit down, you're like, I have no idea how to decorate my planner. All I do is I just go through and I think, okay, I have a little spot. So I look for little things and just decide what I want to put there. Now, this is the day of my be prepared post for my chicken salad sew along. And so I cut out a little picture from the cover of my sew along guide that I'm using. And by the way, that'll, that sew along guide will be out, you know, next week. And so I just cut that out and glued that there. And that's just a reminder that I need to do my be prepared post. This is the first day of the sew along, which is January 31st for the chicken salad sew along. So I put a spool there and I put an iron there. And this is um, where I do my Sabbath stitching on Sundays. And so I put a little cross stitch thing there and an arrow down. And I also put Sunday planning there because I do that. You know, so those are just the kind of things that I do on Saturdays is usually family time. And during the day, it's my home care time. Like this is, if I get anything done in my house, as far as decorating or projects, it's always on Saturday. The rest of the week is, you know, for working and things like that. So punches can be a really fun way to just punch out of scrapbook paper. I like this one. This is by Stampin' Up! and it's got three hearts. So you can just punch all three of these um, in one paper. And then you can take like these cute little bowls that I use that have little things in. These are tabs that I've punched from a long time ago that I just saved in this bowl. But you could just punch a bunch of hearts one day and put in a bowl and put in a little baggie or something or add them to here. And then you have, have those to just add to your pages. Here's one that's a little fancy little tag. Here's one for corners. So that would be kind of fun maybe to do one out of paper and put it on a corner. Let's see. This one's a little tag that's like the shape. <laughs> You can either just punch it out or you can cut it like that. I have all different size circles from big circles to little circles. And I have a few small squares. And a couple that I have that are fun are these, and I use quite a bit, are these little quotes, these little captions. So you can punch those out of a planer paper or craft paper and you can write little things in there, you know, that go, go to things and I can make my vintage lady saying things, which is kind of fun. So I do that and then let's see, I've got this corner rounder. So this one is a three in one. And so this one rounds your corners like this. You just insert it in whichever one you want to do and it shows you your corners, and I like to do that quite a bit. I used that for this little bookmark that I'm in the process of making that I haven't finished yet, but see how I've rounded those corners. So it makes it look really nice. And where's my little punch? Okay, so this, this punch, while we're talking about punches, I wanted to show you, okay, where's that planner that I had that one insert? I think it was this honeycomb one that I had that little card insert in. So this is a spiral punch, okay? Yeah, I think it's, oh no, it was in my scrappy planner. What am I thinking? Okay, so this card right here, this is how, I mean, this is a standard spiral that I love. I just wanna do this carefully. I probably don't really need to be this careful. In fact, let me use something pointy that I can pull it out. This is craft paper. It's pretty heavy paper, so I don't think it'll rip. But I like these because they're repositionable, okay? I saw this. Um, 
little card on a scrapbook paper, like a 12 by 12 scrapbook paper where they have a whole bunch of little things. And I just love this saying. And I'm like, I need to put that in my planner. You don't find the happy life, you make it. And so what I did is I didn't want to punch, use this spiral punch right here to punch into the flowers. And so I just punched on craft paper and then put this card on one side, put paper on the other side to cover that, use my corner rounders. And then I just have a little paper clip that um, clips on that cute little perfect pear thing that I saw on a scrap of paper too as well. And so what I do is once I've punched that for this spiral, there's all different sizes, but for my spirals for this planner is this kind right here. And see, I could even add this if it wasn't, if it didn't stick out that much, <laughs> if it doesn't matter to me, but I could add this, see, right into my planner like that by just pushing it down. But I think what I'll do is um, put that back in to my, to my other one so that I can keep it intact how it was and make other things for this one, which I already started to do. So, you know, my planner has tabs right here for every month, so you can easily turn to that month. But within that month, it's easy to make a bookmark that stays permanently in there for that month. Well, I shouldn't say permanently. It stays in there for the whole month, and then you can take it out. So what I did with this is I took my deck of my Happy Place playing cards, and I just grabbed a card. It's already got the corners rounded. It's already thick and nice. It's the seven of hearts. It's got little spools of thread. I took that and I punched it with this little punch. And then I added a tab and I put today. So right now it's in my month because that's what I was working on. But I can remove this very easily. And then whatever week I'm on during this week, I'll just keep it here. You can put it lower or higher depending on how much you want it to stick out. But I thought that was an easy thing to do. Um, bookmarks, I have a lot of them. I use bookmarks a lot. These are my tags. These make easy bookmarks that you can, I could punch the side of this tube or you can just set them in there. They don't have to be attached to the spiral. I have my vintage ladies you know, that you can just stick in there so that you know. You've got their little vintage head popping up at the top so you know that's what you're, what day you're working on. You know, there's all kinds of things. But I do find bookmarks necessary for my planners and I keep all my little, um, little bits and bobs of things so that I can turn them into bookmarks or, you know, things like that. What I was gonna do for this, and I'm not finished with it yet, I had just kind of started it and didn't get that far, but I wanna back this with paper, with maybe a plainer colored paper so it's a little bit thicker, or maybe I'll just put another paper on here that has a listing, and I wanted to go through, maybe I'll um, do this on Sunday, go through and write down the scripture references that talk about planting and sowing and reaping and you know things like that. I thought that would be kind of fun to have that there. And um, let's see, what else? have I done in here? I wanted to show you what this punch looks like. So I end up just using it like this. You can get it like this. This is by, it's by We Are Memory Keepers and it's part of the punch board. So these, this is what the punch board looks like. I've kept this in the box so that you can see the box. So this is like your storage and in there and then you can punch it. So you can punch a whole bunch at a time, like for one whole page. And then these are extras that you can buy if you want more than one punch of each. I think it comes with a couple of each kinds. And it's the aqua kind right here that fits my, these are all different. There's holes and different sizes and things like that. I don't know if it really, yeah, kind of on the back, it shows you the different sizes, and it's the aqua one that fits my spiral. And so I end up just using that and just doing it by hand because I don't. Okay, so here I've got a scrap paper. Let me show you how I do this. So say I wanted to do this whole edge. 
this entire edge. I don't know if I'd say whole edge. The whole half of this. Okay, so I just start right there and punch, and it does two at a time. Now see this little mark? I hope you can see that lined up. Okay, so see that little mark right there? All you do is continue on when you want them aligned up and put that right there. I'm doing this far away from me so you guys can see. But anyway, you line that up with that, and then you know that if you punch right there, it's going to be lined up. Okay, and you continue, you just continue to go to go down. Okay. So that's why I just use it singly. I don't really need to set it up in a whole big long tray or anything like that. That's too fancy for me. I like to just grab my punch and punch it. So that's what I do for that. This is really fun to add things. You can even add, which I haven't done yet, which I usually do for my planners, like I showed you the header page with that one by um, by President Oopdorf. That saying, I, I like to do, like I would just cut a piece of paper this size of my planner and then just punch the sides and it would just be scrapbook paper. And I can either just leave it plain, a pretty piece of paper, you know, that matches my fabric, the floral, the, the sewing machines, whatever I wanted to do. Or, and then I can decorate that as well by adding things to it or, you know, just leave it plain. But I do kind of like to have a header sometimes. Now with this, this is um, from my sew along guide from Flea Market Flowers. So I always have some clip art in there as well as clip art in my scrapping, my, um, my crafting paper pads. <laughs> I wanted to say scrapbook, but it's crafting, crafting paper pads, but they're different. They're not going to be the same. So, but I'm always using all kinds of vintage ephemera, like whatever, all different kinds of things, um, to put in my planners because, you know, I'm a vintage girl. I mean, I'm actually vintage, but <laughs> I love vintage even before I was vintage. And so I, I love, I do vintage playing cards, although this is not vintage. I, I have done a lot of things like that and just, you know, book receipts, tickets, uh, milk caps, just anything like that that looks cute in a planner. Okay. And so let's see, I think, so I talked to you about punches. I talked to you about glue, other things that I do sometimes, of course, I always have my readers with me is our staplers, okay? So I have, I always have my staplers with me. This is a regular stapler. And then this is by Tim Holtz stapler and it's a mini stapler. So it does little tiny staples, which I love. And it has kind of a long neck. So you can actually get into your planner like this and staple if you want to. So, you know, sometimes you just wanna do something with a tiny, tiny staple instead of a big one. And Let's see, I always have a couple of my small rulers to get things straight, just to measure, things like that. Tweezers for picking small things up that I've cut out. I actually use my bitty boards, or sometimes even bigger than this. I use my design boards for everything, but I use these for scrapbooking as well and, and uh, paper crafting when I do my planner stuff, because when I'm cutting out, I like to cut out over it, and then the piece falls there. <laughs> Because a lot of times, this sounds really weird, but if you're cutting out little pieces and they've landed there, you can't pick them up without bending them. And so a lot of times I'll just do that there. It's easy to pick them up. Or I'll use tweezers to pick them up. Or I have this little tool that I use once in a while if I have like little gems or dots, but this would work for paper. Is It's kind of got a little sticky thing at the top. It's called a pick-me-up. I don't know if they make these anymore. This is from the Silhouette. And I've just used it for when I needed to pick up, say for instance, you know, there was this tiny, tiny piece of paper and it was right here. And maybe it was like this big and I'm trying to pick it up and I'm trying to pick it up and I don't want to lose it. But if you go like that, see, but then it doesn't. Anyway, so there's tools out there. You could go crazy on the tool, tool aisle or you can just, you know, go with the basics like I do. And, uh, I find that kind of fun. All right, so I use that. A um, few things. Let's see, showed you that, showed you that. I do have um, stamps that I use once in a while. I don't use them a lot. Some weeks, some months, some years, I use them more or less than others. 
but I like just little stamps that you can just add little things and sometimes little textures or things like that. But really your scrapbooking paper kind of does that job. But sometimes you just want to add a little texture. Okay, this one, I know this one's by Heidi Swap. I can't remember who these are by. I've had them forever. But I like to use um, this Distress ink from Tim Holtz. Now this stamp I got from the Featherweight shop. Look at that. That's a vintage Featherweight. So of course I'm going to buy that and I'm going to use it. And so what I do with that is literally stamping so easy like and this is a small size so I just put that in the ink this happens to be pink look there's your little featherweight right there so that's really easy to put in your planner and um, then I usually have I'll wash this off in a minute but I'll usually have like little handy wipes or whatever in my kit they're over there somewhere I won't take time to get them but I, I like to I love to use little vintage bowls and dishes and things like that too. And I just have these I just grabbed off my desk and brought them in here. But then I can keep my little bits and pieces in there that I use. Um, these are my paper clips clips for my office set. And um, you know they're nice to just have in a little bowl there, so I don't have to dig for them. All right, I think that's all about supplies. I hope. Let's go through this. Buttons. Sometimes I use my little bits of lace. That bookmark that I showed you that I made out of my tags here. Sometimes I'll just cut a little bit of lace and put in the top. And when I do that, I'll put some fray check at the ends to stop that from fraying. Here's my playing cards. Here's my bookmarks that I did with It's So Emma for my Scrappy pro Project Planner that are still available, and I still use these all the time. And then again, bookmarks, bookmarks, bookmarks that I've showed you a lot of. I just use mechanical pencils. I usually use a 0.5 to fill in my planner and things like that. And, oh, here, hand me that castle. Let me show you something. These are my favorite erasers. I've always used really good gummy erasers. This is Mr. Pen. And so, for instance, oh, I didn't talk to you about my pens, what I use all the time. That's what's in here. It was covered up in my little project bag. But these I did with my, um, with It's So Emma for my Scrappy Project Planner. And I still use these all the time, every day. They're still available. They work great. I love them because they have a fine tip a really fine tip where's that scrap piece of paper that I had and I'll show you how they well you, you saw on my planner how fine they write yeah I'll write that on a sticky note but see I love them because I can I mean look I drew with them in their color I just love how fine the tip is and I, I like the variety of colors and I like how they stay in the case I never have taken these out and put in a bag. I love the case that they come in and it keeps everything, you know, nice and neat in there. And uh, it just, see how fun they write. Love my sticky notes. And I use those all the time. Anything that helps me stay organized that's quick and easy, that only takes me a minute, I do. Now with other pens, I do have some other ones in a bag for when I don't want to use something that fine. So this is what I've got in this cute little bag right here. And this smaller bag that matches it is where I have erasers. So I've got mechanical pencils in here. I've got Pigma markers. I've got some Pigma, um, Pigma pens, some Prisma color, colored pencils. And there's the Pigma right there. And I also like these for permanent. These are by Kelly Creates. I've had these for a while. I don't know if they're still available. Um, American Crafts. But I love these. These are kind of like the Pigma that you can buy. All, one set with all different tips on there. But it seems like it's taking me forever to show you one little thing. But I just don't want to forget anything. So in here, you can see that I wrote this with my Pigma pen. And 
So I don't want to just start writing it with my Pigma pen because it's permanent. It's in my planner and I don't, you know, I can't add another page. Like there's only one page like this. And so what I do is I write everything out in pencil so that I can get the spacing right and make sure I've spelled everything right and do all of that. And then I take my Pigma pen and I'll, I'll write over the top of that. This is how I always draw all my designs and everything for fabric and everything. I've just always done that. I've watched my dad do that as an engineer when he's drafting things. But then I take this eraser and then I just erase over the top of it and it doesn't smear the Pigma pen and it takes away all of the pencil marks. And then it looks like I just wrote that and didn't misspell anything and I spaced everything perfectly. So that's one thing that I do there. Okay, so I think that's enough about this planner. I wanted to show you my binder because like I said, all right, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. I'm really gonna have a mess to clean up because I haven't been putting this away very neatly. In fact, I'm gonna show these in a minute, so I should keep those out. So these are my two companion pieces, okay? I always use notebooks for a lot of things, for everything. I'm, I'm a lister, like I said, I'm a, I always take notes. These are just some of my notebooks that I use all the time. This is one that I've written my notes in to show you, to talk about today. So my big one, this one, by the way, I guess I should tell you that. This one has graph paper in it, but this is the prototype that they just showed me for the cover that doesn't have graph paper. So that's why, in case you're wondering, why is that paper plain? That's why. So, um, I have my lister, I'm writing lists. I have this one that's a different size that I can keep inside my purse. I have that one that came in my office set that also has graph paper. And when I mean lister, let's open this up and show you. See how it's got um, little check off boxes there. I use that thing almost daily. Well, I think I do use it daily. This is something that I do use daily. I grabbed a brand new one because I've got one that's got stuff on it that I didn't necessarily want to show. But this is one I did also with It's So Emma for my Scrappy Project Planner. And I still use this every day. They're still available. I love them. And I will still use this just to jot down notes, kind of like I do with my sticky notes, to transfer over. Or sometimes this is, becomes my honey-do list. Like I'll write down things that need to happen for Mr. Honey or, you know, for if we're doing things around the house or things like that, I'll just kind of write it as a separate thing. And then, you know, when, once they're done, I check them off. And so that's the thing I use. But for my main notebook, I've learned over the years that I just use a binder. Now I'm using my binders now because my binder's been available for about a year now. And so I've been using it. But before I was just buying binders from the store and decorating them and making my own different tabs. But what I have in here is just my schedule on when I do things, okay? In here is all of my things that I detail about all the different things, okay? I have a little kit in here that I keep in my little um, pockets, my little uh, BMI bonnet pockets here. I have a paper punch, my sticky notes. Here's my little scissors I was telling you about, the little pointy ones, I have a glue stick. A pencil. I, I do use my point protectors in here for my pencil because I don't want my lids to break or anything like that. But what I have done in here is I've got a set of folders, a set of 12 folders. And I set a brand new set out here somewhere. But anyway, that come in a set that I have decided instead of making my own dividers like I've always done before is I decided to use my folders for a, by, for a divider. So here is one folder, okay? It already has the tabs, I just filled them in. And then I have, so I've used nine of them. I've used one each of the one of my 12 set. There's two of the same design in the set of 12. So I just used six from that, and then I have three different ones that come in my office set. And so that's a total of nine, and that worked out perfectly because that is the sections, that's the amount of sections that I use. 
So I always have a section for fabric and notions. And so normally this would just be a one paper tab and then I would turn it and here's paper and I'll show you that later. But because this is a folder, and by the way, see how I punched these with um, the bigger punch? I punched these with this size punch so that they had more room to work around. And how I did it in the first place, number one, here's my little, here's my little, uh, or should I say big, the swing line three hole punch that fits for everything in my binder and any binders. But um, because these are longer than eight and a half by 11, they don't fit in there. So what I did is I just went ahead and punched a piece of paper like this and then used it as my guide. Let me show you one without the, here, let me just take one out so I can show you what I mean. Okay, let's go back this way. So here's my guide. There's my piece of copy paper. And what I did was, remember, this does not come punched because it's a folder that I, file folder that I put in my file cabinets. Um, but I laid this here. See, and there's about, and I center it. You know, I mean, you don't have to exactly center it because there's plenty of room in there. But I center it right there. And then... I can take my punch. I mean, this obviously isn't the paper I use because these are smaller holes, but then I can take my punch and turn my punch upside down so that as I put it in there, I can see if I'm lined up or not. And then I just go ahead and punch. And so that's how I get that lined up. I'm gonna put this paper back in. While I'm doing that, I'll tell you, see how I use just regular I still call it typing paper because, you know, I'm vintage, but it's called copy paper now. <laughs> but I can still use it on the typewriter if I want to. I do have several vintage typewriters, and I do use those in my planners. I like to sit down and type different things and then just cut out, you know, the little word strips and put them in my planners and stuff. I think it looks fun and vintage. But so inside here, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to take more of my... Um, paper pad paper and pick different papers and make pockets. So see, here's a little pocket in here. So in each one of these, I have a little pocket that I can put like sketches, ideas, or just things that I'm thinking about in each category. Um, you know, as I go along and then use them and remove them, throw them away. This doesn't have to be fancy or anything. I just set it up like this and I can use all of these tabs for years to come and just fill the different papers. In here, I also wanted to show you, I have this cute little notebook. This is by Heidi Swap. Look how cute that is. A little vintage cassette. But a lot of times I'll just use little notebooks too that I can kind of write a list and then maybe I'll rip that out and put it in the category that I need to because this is where I detail everything. So for paper, I put copy paper or type paper, whatever you want to do. I do put on each side, my reinforcers, my flower power reinforcers. There are a ton of these in this package. There are six colors, 24 pages, 576 of these in one package. So they go a long way. So I have that in there. I also have like, look, these are the notes from my sew alongs. I always give you a note page in my sew along so you can add those papers in there. And you can just buy packages of this lined paper, which I have. And so that's kind of what I have in each section. Sometimes they become just scrap paper. I've used them all I need to. I don't need to keep it for anything, so I'll just rip it out and throw it away. Like I say, this is not my, this is my workable <laughs> thing where I do sketches, ideas, do more detailed schedules. This is my quilting. So I have papers behind it. I don't know if you can, let me move this over to make sure you can see my little thing. So, so far I've got my fabrics and notions because that's my work. And, but um, under quilting, I'll have everything under here under quilting. My, my designs, my book designs for It's So Emma, my patterns that I'm designing, um, everything that has to do with quilting, my sew alongs, you know, this is where I write lists, keep things detailed so that I just, you know, I have to have room to write things down. 
this section I have for filming and for my blog for tutorials and things like that and things that I have planned and again I haven't filled any of this up because I cannot show you all my secrets but I usually plan all of my um, YouTube tutorials at least six to eight months ahead of time and uh, so I have a lot of things planned this is crochet so this is going to be all about my crochet of course I have my some diagrams in here that I've already started to fill up. This is cross stitch. This is things, um, oh, this is for my washi tape. Remember I told you you can make little bookmarks from that. So I've just put that in there. I can actually cut that off and use the little Tim Holtz stapler and staple those on and make a little tab. But within here is where, I'll, where I will write down my my sows, you know, what I'm going to stitch, what my plans are, my starts, what threads I need to order, where I order them from. So I'll remember when I get them back in the mail. So I don't, I'm not like, what did I buy this? Can't remember what I bought these silks for. And then because I have it written down in here, then I just use it as a reference. This is my home care one. So this is all about decorating my house, um, my house projects, um, you know, cleaning projects, just all of that kind of stuff that has to do with my home care. My garden goes in there, all that kind of stuff, anything, any information that I'm planning and working on. And then this is my self-care. So in here I can talk about and write down my ideas, you know, my recipes, different exercise plans, just different goals that I have, my different uh, bike rides that we want to go on and you know just things like that that keep me moving keep me healthy and here I have my family plans and so all about family which will include vacations family reunions holidays special birthday parties just anything like that so I'll have that in there and then I always have a miscellaneous one at the end Sometimes I'm writing things down and I don't know exactly what category it's into or it's just a, an idea that I'm not sure about or something that doesn't have anything to do with this. I don't know what it could be, but I always just have a miscellaneous somewhere that I can just stick things <laughs> before I have time to go through and put them. So when I open this up, I always look in my miscellaneous first. And a lot of times this is where I have my sticky notes and things like that. So I don't take the time to open it up and put in the categories that I need them to go into at that time. I'll usually just stick them on the inside cover or something like that. And so how I made these pockets, that's what I want to end with. Because I just wanted to show you, or just tell you, actually, how I made the pockets. It's very easy. So what I did was I took a piece of paper. Here, I'm just going to push this out of the way. It's just probably as easy to show you. Okay, so sometimes I'll use a paper cutter or I'll use a rotary cutter with an old blade to cut my paper. Okay, and it's just it's just as easy. And when I'm in my bedroom, I have my paper cutter at my desk, and so I do that. When I'm in here, it's just easy. Instead of moving my paper cutter around, then I'll just bring that in. So let's say I wanted to make a pocket out of this paper right here. So without my folders, this is what, I just want to make sure I don't rip that. Okay. So because these are eight and a half by 11, this is normally what I would make my dividers out of. I would back it with another piece of paper and I may round the corners. I don't know, but I would put a tab on it and then I would put it in the three hole punch and then make those dividers. But I thought it was kind of fun to use my file folders for dividers for this year's. So what I did with this is I went ahead and cut four inches off the top. And then these four inches is what I'm going to like put in my scraps. That's what I use to cover my, <laughs> these are leftovers from some of the pockets that I used that paper for. I don't know. I mean, that's really unnecess unnecessary, but all of this is really unnecessary, right? <laughs> not for me, but maybe for you, but um, why not? Why not cover cute stuff with paper? All right, so this is gonna be the top, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. 
I'm gonna turn this around so I can see it better and you can see it better. But I'm just gonna measure in three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna score it. I'm gonna put this away because I don't wanna cut it on accident. I'm so used to grabbing a rotary and just using it. But you know my, um, this clover point to point turner that I always have you use with my So Simple Shapes? This also works as a great scorer. So I've measured in three inches and I just go like this. I'm just using it like a rotary cutter, but it's just kind of scoring that paper so that it will fold nicely there. So I'm gonna do it along the sides and along the bottom. Like I say, it's just as fast to show you as it is to tell you, I guess. Super easy. Cash, do you wanna reach in there while I'm doing this and find me a file folder so I can show them how I do this? Okay, so now that that is kind of scored, I don't know if you can see that, but it means it's gonna bend easier. And so I'm just going to start right here and kind of slowly bend it so that it's on those scored lines. It's kind of hard though, because I have to do it far away from me. And I can't really see. I guess I could put on my readers, but they're only for close up. Okay, so I do that once I bend it or fold it on the line, and I'll go ahead and use this so that it's a nice crisp fold. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna have to bring this closer to me just to make sure I get it right. So you're just gonna have to pretend you can see what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> but I'm just folding. Nothing sensational. Okay, so, and then the third side, or the last side, do the same thing. Okay, so now I've got those nice and folded, but see how these corners kind of get in the way of each other? What I'll do is grab my paper scissors now that I've put everything down somewhere. Okay, paper scissors. This is why it's nice to work at a desk because you put everything in the same place at the same time. Are they under here? Here they are, sis. I can see the handle. Okay, so I take the paper scissors and I just cut to that corner, not into it or not past it, like this. I mean, you could cut a triangle off, but I just kind of like to do that. It's not quite a triangle. And see, when that's folded underneath, it's not quite so bulky. You can do it even more of a dramatic angle if you wanted. This is all gonna show under, not show because it's going to be under, but I do, I don't like to cut into the corners too much because I don't want anything to fall out of the pockets if it was tiny. Or pointy. Okay, so there's my pocket right there. Okay, then I grab my double stick tape, which double-sided tape. This is almost gone. <laughs> so anyway, I won't really do this one because, but anyway, so I'll put it on here. I'll put it on here. Okay, and I'll do it all the way up to the edges on the tops here. And because that's what I love about it is when you pull this off, it sticks to here, but sticks to one side, which is the paper. Boy, that end piece doesn't really want to work. But you have to pull off this red piece for it to stick on the other side. So what I do is I put it on all three sides. Okay, hand me the folder, sis. So I put it on all three sides. Here's the folder. Or I want to put the pocket. Okay. And I'll put it along here and peel off the red part first and stick that down. And I start down here to make sure it's all straight. I'll stick that down and then I'll be able to, that'll be stuck down. Then I'll be able to pull these back, pull these two ends off and then just put it back up. And that's how I how I do it, then I can take my little um, tabs right here, wherever they are, right here in this little package. 
I can take my little tabs. These are already have double stick on them. So look at this cute red one with the cute hair. So you just pull off the tape here. They are, they're already scored for you. And you can just put that in there, glue that, and then write your little tab what you want. So that's how I did the pockets. Okay, that's a lot of information, but I knew it was going to be for the first video, um, be a lot of information. But I guess it's better to have too much than not enough, right? I don't know. And then you can decide how you want to do your planner. If you like my setup, go ahead and do exactly what I do. Um, you know, just know that it's not permanent as you're planning. Just know that, you know, there is flexibility. That's why I use a pencil so that I um, can move things around. And like here in home care, I've put in pencil, but I'm not sure which home, which house project it is. So I might just erase those and and uh, put in more specific details. Right here, I know I'm doing a floss tube or my planner cover tutorial, but I don't know which one, so I put my arrows here. You know, just kind of gone back and forth that way, and then I can fill in permanently. But um, just know that the planner is not to restrict you. It is not to make you feel like, um, you're more stressed or give you anxiety attacks because you're not following your planning guide. If it's doing that, then you've probably have too, too much on there and too strict. Like I'm always doing sew alongs, but I can't do all the sew alongs at once, right? So that's why I take this right here and in my quilting section, that's where I detail and put my priority list of all the sew alongs I'm doing. Now, if I'm hosting them, of course I'm going to be doing them doing, during the sew along because I'm the host. But if it's just some sew along that I've joined, I decide then if I can do it during the time that it's being hosted or if I'm going to be doing it later, if I have the pattern, um, you know, that kind of thing. That's where I'll detail everything. And then as, I'm, as I've written things down, you know, on my list, pretend you can see my list here, as I've written things down, then I know what I want to do first or need to do first, you know, for different reasons. And I can see my priorities. And then I just start on that one. And I break out, break out, block out, not break out, block out time in my week or in my day, however that looks for me. We're all different. Some of us have full-time jobs. Some of us have more than full-time jobs. Some of us don't. Some of us have, you know, different times, different seasons, different weeks, whatever, months. It's just always flexible. And so this is a time where you customize it to you. And it really is a lot easier than it sounds. This is a lot of information. I'm not trying to overwhelm you. I'm just giving you options and basically showing you what I do. And believe me, I didn't develop all of this overnight all at once. If you're a beginner um, planner, then don't be overwhelmed. Just know that um, it just takes time and you just start out by just having a planner and writing things down. And then as you go along, you, you learn what you can do. And if it's stressing you out, then plan more time. For certain things and so that or, or not as much keep them on your list you don't have to kick them off your list you just can't be doing them all at the same time like I say I always say I can do everything just not all at the same time so I hope this encourages you and uh, makes you want to get out your planner and get out your paper and your glue and your scissors and all of that kind of stuff and I sure have been having a good time setting this up and filming for you. And I hope that you have a fun time with your planner. I really hope that you have a happy new year and a happy 2022. And I just want to give a special thank you to all of you for subscribing, for your comments. I read each and every one for supporting me, for supporting my channel, my art, my designs, my creations. And I especially want to thank um, It's So Emma for publishing my planner for me. 
and to um, I want to especially thank Riley Blake Designs for my papers and my paper crafting pads and just everything that it all entails. I I love working with It's So Emma. I love working with uh, Riley Blake Designs and I love how between both of them I can, uh, you know, marry two things together and really have fun with them. And I hope you have fun with them as well. And I will chat with you next year.